Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mac Outdoors with Mia and Leah. Last week we talked about turkey hunting and our crazy adventures, and this week we're going to share with you some awesome outdoor apps. Stay tuned. This summer, whether you're at the range or in the field, WSI Sports' Hypertech Bamboo Tanks, Tees, and Leggings will have you covered. Visit WSISports.com and use Leah's affiliate code, LLCO10, for 10% off your purchase. All products are proudly made in the USA. WSI is bringing back pride in American-made clothing. Again, that code is LLCO10 for 10% off your order at WSISports.com. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mac Outdoors podcast, where a dynamic mother-daughter duo share their adventures, tips, and advice. I am Mia, and I'll be accompanied by the one and only daughter, Leah. It is time to get to outdoors, hunt, shoot, and spend time with family and friends. Let's get this show on the road. Hey, guys. So last week, we talked about turkey hunting, and it was opening weekend, so I'm sure that we have some updates to share. I know my mom was guiding. So how did that go? That was actually a super fun opening weekend, Leah. As you know, we had been scouting and we had patterned the turkeys. So we had two youth hunters, a brother and little sister. And the brother had bagged turkeys before, but it was this young lady's first time to hunt a turkey. And, um, she had hunted geese and other waterfowl, but she was pretty excited to try to get a turkey. So she had first dibs and they were set up and at sunrise, the turkeys were in the roost gobbling and the hens are clucking and they flew down in the wrong direction. They actually flew down behind the guide. So she couldn't turn to take a shot because the guides were, you know, yards behind her. So um, I actually was out with her brother, so I wasn't at her location, but that was an exciting morning. And then that evening, we used those Montana decoys that we talked about in the last episode, and those turkeys came in, and she bagged her first bird. It was a great tom, and um, she really did a good job. Both of those kids were outstanding to hunt with because they were so safe and responsible, and they just paid attention outstandingly. And can you hear her squeaking more? This dog. Speaking of this dog that's making noise in the background, <laughs> I wanted to give some shout outs to some followers on social media and occasionally Scrappy Corgi does comment on some of our posts. <laughs> um, <laughs> on Instagram, Scrappy Corgi, you can see this wonderful little dog that is being a distraction right now. But also on Instagram, Whitetail Rendezvous follows us a lot and always has stuff to say. On Facebook, Raymond Capel, thank you for always being there as a wonderful fan. And then a new follower that I just met on so on Twitter, her handle is Alyssa Biggs Five. And apparently, according to her profile, she's like your age, Leah. So I'm really excited, and hopefully, we can give her some tips, and maybe she can comment and give us some as well. That's awesome. We love all the support, and I'm so glad that we have younger viewers, and hopefully there's even more out there that just haven't reached out. Yeah, and, and I'm excited too, and I know we mentioned last week about the Self-Defense Radio Network, but we created the Mac Outdoors profiles on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook to kind of channel the podcast and other stuff that we do with Mac Outdoors. So give us a follow there. And speaking of social media, and most of us do that on our cell phones, those kids that were turkey hunting, I was really impressed that they didn't have their phones in the field. So that was impressive because I know a lot of kids carry them. I carry my phone in the field, but they really were focused on getting birds. And I wanted to ask you, we talked about some apps to help you as a college kid and I think it'd be helpful to other people who are trying to explore new areas you were going to tell us about some different things that you've found that are very helpful yeah so actually I am in Missoula Montana and one of the apps that I love and use all the time is Onyx Maps and they're based right here in Missoula as well so that's super exciting to see their little headquarters right here in this somewhat small town of Missoula. 
Uh, I love this app. It's basically just like having a regular handheld GPS, but on your phone. You pay for what state you want to look at. I have Colorado, Montana, and New Mexico because you can buy them in bundles. And so mostly I use Montana right now. But I love it, especially since I don't know the area super well. It's really cool to be driving around and pull over and see a spot. And I'll look on my map and see what's private land. I can see who the landowners are, how far it goes. It's a topo map, so I can base that off of, well, here's this. But So with the Onyx maps, Leah, do you have, since it's on your phone, do you have to have cell service? to use it or does it kind of load, do you load the area and then you can use it while you're in the field? Um, So with these, I believe you have to have service. I haven't really tested it when I go out of service. It'll still show um, wherever I was looking. If I get back on it and am not in service, it'll just show the same area, but I can't scroll through if I don't have service, which is kind of a bummer. But I was looking at it here, and I think you can upgrade it and make it where you can use it without service, but I'm not sure how that works. Okay. Um, I was just curious because it's been, gosh, probably five years ago that I had it on my phone, and that was an issue around here. There's not service in a lot of places, and I wasn't able to get it to ever load. So I had taken it off, but thankfully you and Hank had bought me one for, (laughs) yes, so (laughs) so (laughs) great on the GPS as well. Yeah, and so I really like like it a lot just to see all the private land areas and it's actually fun to see like new areas to go hike. And speaking of hiking, there's another hiking app that I have grown to love, especially around here. It's cool to see all the places that I can go hike around. Uh-huh. Which that is the all trails app and it shows all the hiking trails in your area or even in other areas that you might be traveling to so that one do you just look at the map and then you look at an area and see if there is a trail or can you put if somebody said like go hike up turkey creek trail could you put that in and look for it or yeah you you can search trails if someone said a turkey creek trail you'd have to be specific to what area you're looking at and I learned from experience because there's a Spring Creek Trail here and there's a Spring Creek Trail near where we live back home. So you have to be specific to the area you're looking at or else you'll get trails from all over the place. So (laughs) that makes a ton of sense. (laughs) But it you can what's really cool and I really like about it is it says it people can rate the trail if it's hard or easy or moderate and then they can submit their own pictures from their hike. So before you go on the hike, you can see kind of what the terrain looks like and if it's an area you would want to hike. Very cool. So the Trails app, what was it called again? It's called All Trails app. All Trails. Does that one cost money? It's free. You can upgrade it and it does, I think you can track where you hike and everything like that, but it is free to search all trails and you can save the trails that you want to hike to your profile so that if you're not busy a day or a weekend, it'll save all the trails that you hearted when you're searching in your area. That that sounds really cool and I really like that it's free because the Onyx Maps, is that Fifteen dollars, or uh, it's around there. And, and a I month. think it's it's a monthly fee, or yes, something like that. So, um, and I would I would have to I'll put a link in our show notes to, to the site to Onyx because um, I don't know the exact amount, but I know I in my opinion it's a little bit pricey. But then the chips, like you guys bought me the chip for my GPS, the chips are about a hundred dollars. So, and they have to be updated all the time or yearly. Yeah. I'm not sure which one is better, but I think all of those, regardless of the fee, is way better than being on the wrong side of the line and being on private property and trespassing and get a, getting a fine or something like that. So, yes. <laughs> on the phone, 
Does the Onyx map show you the hunting unit you're in? Yes, it'll show you um, if it's a restricted area, if it's um, what unit you're in at all times, if it's an elk or deer specific unit, especially up here, there's a lot of different units and it'll tell you elk and deer and it'll even tell you if there's land management areas or nature conservancy areas, it'll show you everything. That's really cool. Um, I might have to see if the latest update on my chip shows any of that because on my GPS, I don't think I have all that. Are there any other apps that you've started using since you were up there for getting outdoors or even for shooting? I haven't really found any shooting specific ones. I've mostly used these just because I'm new to the area and I love to adventure. And this also shows all the roads and even shows trails and how to get there. Most of them do. Both the Onyx and Trails maps will show you all the information you really need. That is super cool. That's really cool. I know that you've been, you're getting close to the end of semester and finals and whatnot, so I know you've been pretty busy, but you did share some pictures with me the other day from a little trek you took. What was that? Yeah, so there's a lot of wildlife refuges around Missoula and kind of on the outskirts of town. And I tagged along with one of my friends that's an avid duck hunter, and she went to practice her calling because there's ducks everywhere out there. And so it was so cool. It's so beautiful out there. And I saw so many ducks that I had never seen before. That's cool. And I know you were so excited and you said that she was kind of like laughing at you. But down here where we are, we only get like mallards and mud ducks and nothing, no huge variety. I think one time we had a cinnamon teal land in our pond. So what (laughs) what birds did you see? Uh, We saw a lot of different ones. I saw a cinnamon teal, some redhead. The first time I ever saw a northern shoveler which was super cool. Uh, We saw mergansers and a couple other ones that had some funky names, but it was so cool. I was like, what duck is that? What duck is that? What duck is that? And she (laughs) would be like, well, it's this. Or there was some that even she didn't know or hadn't really seen before. So it was really cool to see all these different kinds of birds there. And that was actually the place that I saw my first wild swan at. So there's all kinds of birds at this place. Oh, and speaking of birds that I saw there, I use my map, my Onyx map, and I can see exactly how this um, land is that they have as the refuge. And on the very north end of the refuge, we saw two toms strutting around on just right on the other side of the fence. I believe they were on private land. But it was so cool since it was turkey season, and you can hunt on this place. So maybe I will go see if I can bag a turkey at this place. That is super cool because I was just going to ask you if you can hunt on any of the refuges. And so you can on that one? On that one, yeah. And they even have duck blinds there for the public to use. I believe there's nine of them. And they have a map with all the trails. Is it first come, first serve for the blinds? Yeah. So you got to get up pretty early in the morning to beat all the other people, maybe. <laughs> pretty much, I think. Next winter, maybe you two can go check that out. And um... Yeah, she's already making plans for us to go out there early in the morning and shoot some ducks. So I'm pretty excited. That's awesome. And so I have another question for you because we've been talking about different Um, your friend and how she hunts waterfowl. She's from the Northwest and you've been teaching her some stuff and she's been teaching you some stuff. And in talking about these apps and technology, how do you find if you, when you're in college, how do you find people with like interests? And I mean, obviously to find friends is way different than dating and you don't want like, you can't use a dating app to go find friends to hang out with unless you just want boyfriends or something. How can other hunters in college find friends that hunt as well? Uh, I actually think it's really hard to find 
um, people with the same interests. I actually met this girl through the Facebook that our school created, a group of incoming students for the 2017-2018, and they invite you to post about yourself just so you can meet friends and stuff like that. And we saw each other's posts and just kind of reached out from there. What I've been doing, I know we discussed in previous episodes with me doing a shooting group and stuff like that. I always post on there that we're going to go shooting. And if anyone wants to go, I can meet up with them and tell them how it works, where we're going. And even if they don't hunt or aren't really shooters, I still welcome anyone to come because I think that's the best way to make friends and introduce people to shooting and hunting if they are for or against it or aren't sure. Yeah, and so that's a Facebook group that the school created. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's super cool. It's nice that I know a lot of people will get mad at social media and stuff like that, but really I've made some great friends on social media that I – otherwise never would have met. And I do understand there's ups and downs of social media, but I think it's neat that your school was trying to invite people to come together and make friends because there are a lot of you who are from way far away in different parts of the country Mm -hmm. that didn't know a single soul going into that. So it's neat that you've made some friends and also that you're trying to be open and inviting other people to learn something that maybe they don't even know about. Yeah, and I think it's hard with people that are into things that I am probably aren't as social media based. I've met a few from classes that are into kind of hunting and shooting, but they don't get on the social media as much and don't pay attention to the college group because a lot of stuff posted in there is just really not relevant to anything. And so that's probably the hardest part is finding those people that don't interact with your college social media. Right. And that's why I'm trying to create this group for people that like to shoot. And I would really just like it to be something where people that have the same interests just can kind of go and hang out, something like that for the college. Cause that is something that I've struggled with as a first time student here that is at a very liberal college to find people that hunt and, do all of that kind of, those kind of activities. And I think that's awesome that you're trying to encourage that because a lot of kids simply um, leave their roots or leave their traditions. And, you know, it's great to explore new things, but also you need to remember who you are. And I think that's awesome that you are doing that. And you're also open to, I know you had some kids that had come from areas that weren't allowed to have guns and stuff like that and you educated them a little so I think that's awesome. Yeah it's been really fun kind of getting out of my box and being more social and open and it's fun just to see all the new people that you wouldn't expect want to shoot. I know we discussed that in one of the previous episodes my shooting adventures with people that are just learning how to shoot so That's awesome. I'm glad that you shared these apps with us and hopefully they'll help other people who are trying to find ways to get in the outdoors and actually even for veteran outdoors men and women who want to either hike or hunt or whatever. I think they'd be great for anybody. So thanks for sharing them with us. (laughs) We hope that you guys will subscribe to our show before we go. Speaking of social media, we hope that you'll head over and follow us. Mia Ansign and Leah underscore Huntress. Until next time, have a great one. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, this is Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, host of the Armed Lutheran radio podcast, reminding you that the podcast you're listening to is a proud member of the Self Defense Radio Network. Check out all the great content at selfdefenseradio.net.